it's me and the Rapley from HR Reviews and today we are going to review the book Bud of When. It has all the questions that Tim wanted to know but never got to know. It has it like questions like when was Pop Tone first pop? When did dinosaurs die out? When did the first spacecraft land on Mars? It has eight hundred and one facts, and this is the front tower. This is the spine with the name of the boat, Big Butter Wen. This is the back tower with more questions. We have one was I seen for sure. One was the cheat. The first text message sent. One did people slot you in slots under the picture of Ben then. Big Ben. There, they have even more books like Bid Both of Why, Bid Both of Why, Bid Both of How, Bid Both of Where. But now let's just study to the first chapter. The first chapter is time. It has over 10, I mean it's from 6 to 22 pages. So yeah, let's read it. When did time begin? Chapter 1 time. At some point early in life, most people learn how to tell time. It's a critical to understand in minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years is a big part of what keeps keeping track of time like this. This was also used as time in ancient time, I think. Let's steep it upside down. World oldest mechanical clock. This took uh, a long time but the, made by Wolf's Cathedral in land. Let me show you in the camera. Look, that is the mechanical clock over there. March of time. Most often we use clocks and calendars to measure time. We also measure time by the circle and motion of the moon, Earth and Sun. Earth can one year for Earth to go around the Sun every day. Earth spins on its axis, which makes it look like the Sun is moving across the sky. We can measure the length of a day by following the shadows created by the Sun. Next one. Oh, this one is a fun fashion of magnifying glass. Daylight saving time began when Benjamin Franklin suggested that people could save candles by waking up earlier in the summer and working longer during daylight hours. Daylight saving time was formally adopted in the U.S. in 1980. In the 1980s, to keep clock in sync with Earth's slowing rotation. Oh, I'm stuck. Rotation. Oh. To keep clock in sync with Earth's slowing rotation, a leap second has to be added in every few years. Like that, like that, from a year to a year. To a year, to a year. Yeah, next thing. Why did people begin to use calendars? This is a new one. The oldest calendar was not like the one handed on your wall. It was a row of ancient pits in Stockland that are about 10,000 years old. Stone Age humans dug this complex of series of holes to represent the months of the year and praises of the moon. They used the calendar for 6,000 years. Wow, that's a lot. I've never used calendars that long. The Babylonian calendar had 29 days and 30 days, alternating months that equal roughly 354 days. Don't we have 365 days? Guys, please put it down in the comments because I don't know. The Babylonians added three extra months every eight years. Why? I don't know. 
In 46 BC, Julius Caesar, the ruler of ancient Rome, wanted to have one calendar that people could use across the Roman Empire. This calendar year was 365 days long. That's the correct one. Now we're talking. Where was I? Oh, with one extra day, leap day or leap day added every four years. So that's four less. Caesar moved the first day of the year from March 1 to January 1. Today, most the past calendar. Today, most of the world used the Gregorian calendar, named for the Pop Gregorian. It's one one one. I do not know what that is. In the late 1500s, Pat Gregory wanted to align Easter with the first day of spring. As a result, his calendar year is exactly 365 days, 5 hours, 48 minutes, and 46 seconds long. Why did it have to be that long, Pat Gregory? Next one. What did humans first begin measuring time? Oh, this one is finally coming handy. Humans first started to measure and record the passage of time about 30,000 years ago. That's so long. To do so, they recorded the phrases of the moon. Historians credit the ancient Egyptians with di dividing time into the hours and minutes we use today. They did this by using a oh, by using a symbol sundial, a, a stake placed in the ground. They watched as the sun's movement changed the shadow of the rod's length. In the direction around 1500 BC, the Egyptians built a more advanced T-shaped sundial that divided the period between sunrise and sunset into 12 parts. One, into 12 parts. Wow, that's so lot. Here's some fun fact. There were 86,400 seconds in one day, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. That's the door. 86,400. When did people start using slots? We have water slots, tennis slots, hourglasses. Look, we even have an hourglass to show you guys. This is an animal. This is an analog slot. Analog slot. This one is also an analog slot. Analog slot. And this one was bought from Czech Republic. We even have uh, another analog slot. We have a digital slot. Can you guys just wait here for a second? I'm back. Okay. We have an alarm clock. Yeah, so that's the clocks I have. Let's read about water clock. I thought I'm really interested. A water clock measured time at night invented around 1500 BC. These devices allow water to flow in it into a container. Okay, that's pretty randomizer. As water level rose, measurements on the container help people determine, determine, determine what time it was. During the 6th century in China and the 10th century in England, people kept time by watching candles burn. People made mark lines on the candles today to tell when each hour passed. Candle clocks gave an idea of the time, but they weren't that accurate because different watches burn at different rates. Hourglasses! Oh, what's a slip is like this one. By the 1300s, artisans had mastered the art of glass making 
Uh, our blog should help people take time by measuring the speed of sand as it moves from the top to the bottom of the glass. Try it! How to build a sundial! Oh, we will try this in the next video. This video that's 100 lights. Yeah, 100. When did people start using mechanical glass? In the 13th century, Europeans artisans designed the mechanical flask as a more reliable method of telling time. The earliest me mechanical flasks were designed in Europe in the late 1300. Mechanical flasks. What makes a mechanical flask tick? And a statement is that the heart for all mechanical flasks. For example, in a grandfather clock, in a statement made sure that the clock dear advanced at a steady and equal rate. That's why the hands of the clock moved to red with precision. Grandfather clocks were originally called long taste clocks. The name changed in 1876 when an American musician named Henry Playward wrote a song titled My Grandfather's Plot. So that was the fun fact. And Grandfather Plot just did my plot. Um, I don't know about that. But yeah, so if you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and share. For now, bye! And we'll also do a next episode. So stay tuned for next time. Voila.